In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create cool tiers just like these on your own. I can think of so many cool concepts and creative photos where tiers like this or just this technique would look awesome and cool. So without further ado, let me just show you how to do it. So this is the final photo that you can see right here, but let's just turn off these two layers and remove the tiers so that I can show you exactly how I did step by step. The most important step for this that you have to do on the actual shooting is to capture two photos with water running down your model's chin or your own chin depending on whether you're doing a self-portrait or not. The way I did it is that I took a watering can and poured the water as close to my eyes as possible but of course without hurting my eyes to get the same effect. And of course you want to take a photo doing that for both sides of your face. And now let's talk editing. The first step is to take one of these photos, let's just start with the left here, and copy it into our Photoshop document. To do this, first press Command J to duplicate the layer and just copy it like you normally do. For a Mac, it's Command C and then Command V to paste. Now we can go over to the toolbar and choose the lasso tool. With this, we just want to outline very roughly the part of the image that we want to use, the part with the actual water running down the face. It's just to make it easier to see what we're doing. Then you can click this button down here to create a layer mask and that just removed everything except for for our selection. Then lower the opacity, also just to make it easier to see what we're doing. And now you can drag the tier to fit the face. Keep in mind that we don't want the watering can showing, so we have to drag it up a little bit higher to make it look like the water is actually coming from the eye. Now to make it fit even better, we're going to go over to filters and then click liquify tool. In here we can kind of warp the image and just make it fit the face a lot better. So let's just zoom in quickly. First of all, you want to make sure that you have background over here checked off because this will allow you to see the layer underneath the layer that we're working on. So without that, you wouldn't be able to see what you're doing. And now you can just drag around the tier to fit the facial curves. Think about how water would naturally flow down your face and then make it fit that. Once you're done, click OK. Now we can change the opacity to 100% again, and then we're going to mask out the tier. This is how you do it. Make sure the layer mask down here is selected, choose the brush tool, make it smaller, and also make sure that it's soft. And now we can just paint away everything except for the tear itself, of course. If you made a mistake, you can always change the brush color to white and you can paint back in anything that you accidentally removed. This might take a little while if you haven't done it before, but just take your time and it will look awesome. You can clearly see that this button part of the tear doesn't fit at all with the colors and with the light. So we're just going to remove that for now. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the other eye because it's just normal to cry from both eyes. So far so good. <laughs> so now we need to create the other half of each tier. To do that I'm actually going to be using a free stock photo. I find all my stock photos, if I don't have them myself, on unsplash.com or pexels.com. Both websites are great but if you want to use the same photo that I use I'll just leave a link for it in the description box below. The important thing for the stock photo is that we don't have any strong colors that will be hard to blend in and also that it actually looks like a tear. So this photo here is perfect because it's black and white and we don't have any crazy colors. And this water could pretty much look like a tear and it will be pretty easy to make it look more teary or <laughs> whatever you want to call it. First, I drag the photo into Photoshop and mask it out using the lasso tool just like we did with the other tears. Then choose the blending mode screen and you'll already see that it fits a lot better into the photo. Now press command T to transform it and drag and rotate it to fit with one of the tiers we just created. Then lower the opacity a little bit. Now once again go to filter liquify tool and adjust it to fit the other part of the tier. Since this tier is coming from the left and going a little bit to the right, I'm going to make this one do the same thing. I'm also making sure that it ends where it's supposed to down here in the fishbowl. Now, before we go further, we can duplicate it, drag it over to the right eye, delete the liquify layer and apply a new liquify layer and then also make it match this tier. So it actually needs to go in the opposite direction than the other piece of water, if that makes sense. And now it's time to mask out the two pieces of water just like you did before. Make sure the layer mask is selected, choose the brush tool, set it to black and paint away everything but the tier. <laughs> looks a 
a little bit like the tears are on top of the photo rather than a part of the photo if that makes sense so just to make it look a little bit more realistic we're going to create some shadows we only want the shadows to affect the skin and not the tear itself so go select the layer that is underneath the tears then go to adjustment layers and create a curve layer just make the curve a little bit darker overall now press command i and this will reverse the layer mask so that it becomes black and you can paint in with white where you want the shadow to affect the image and to where you want any shadow to be really now just paint all around the tears and it will just make the tears pop and also make it look a lot more realistic we're nearing the final awesome result but these final adjustments are the ones that will make your tears look realistic so stay with me here now as you can see these stuck tears that we imported are very sharp compared to the rest of the tears and we don't want that so to just make it a little bit more blurry and just make it make it fit the overall image we're going to like one of the tears go over to filters then blur and then gaussian blur and apply just a little bit of blur maybe two pixels is fine and now just do exactly the same thing to the other tier this step right here is optional but if your tears are landing in a container like this we need to make it less visible in the parts where it's covered by the glass if that makes sense so to do that select both layers with the water and put them into one group then create a layer mask for that group select your brush and make it a little bit bigger and very soft now lower the opacity of the brush just like i'm doing right here and this will make sure that you will just lower the opacity of wherever you paint so now you can just paint over the water in the area where it's covered by the bowl and in these places where there's some light hitting or stuff like that i'm just painting over it a couple of times and voila it looks like the water is behind the container the final step is to make it look more realistic i know i already said this a couple of times but this one will just finish it up and just make it look like a real tea okay <laughs> So this step is to add some more shadows. So go to adjustment layers, curves layers and make it darker just like we did earlier. Now create some shadows, especially right here where the tear starts just to make it look like it's actually coming from the eye. If you just paint in a curve above it like I'm doing, I think it will do the trick. Now you just need to finish the rest of the photo and then you're done. This trick is so much fun and I personally love how it turned out because it just looks very melancholic but childish at the same time. It's a weird mix but I love it and I think I'm definitely going to be using it for some more concepts in the future. If you have any questions just leave them in the comments below and I will answer them as fast as I can and also if you have any things that you want to see from me any tutorials anything you want to know just let me know in the comments below because i really want to make videos about the things that you guys want to see so definitely let me know in the comments i really hope this was helpful and if it was it would also just help the algorithm a lot if you would give the video a like and a comment if you're an aspiring creative photographer you might want to go check out my other videos or subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little bell button to never miss my future videos my name is elijah and this is my instagram handle if you want to see more and until next time bye bye <laughs>